Hey y'all, Jilly Darling here. I'm a nature and abundance coach and I help people reconnect with nature so they can get into the flow of abundance. <laughs> so I wanna share something with you that I am so freaking excited about. I hiked the Grand Canyon a few days ago. I backpacked 20 miles, 6,000 vertical feet, 3,000 down, 3,000 back up, all because I wanted to go swimming in the most beautiful hot springs I've ever seen. <laughs> Water is my life. I like swimming in it in beautiful, natural places. <laughs> so um, it's actually warm springs. They're about 70 degrees. And considering it was about, I think it was like 20 degrees at night and about 40 degrees during the day, the water was really nice. <laughs> it was nice and warm and amazing. And I have a bunch of pictures to share with you. And I just want to share because I feel really proud of myself. <laughs> I feel so proud of myself. So I've had a tough relationship with my body. I was born legally blind. So I can see, but <laughs> not clearly at all. Like without my contact lenses or my glasses, um, I would know there was a person standing in front of me. I wouldn't know what gender they were. I couldn't tell the shape of their body. I certainly couldn't tell what their face looked like. Oh, when I was in the second grade, they figured out um, what that I couldn't see. <laughs> and then I got glasses and stuff. And anyway, um, but what happened before I learned how to see with my eyes, I really had a broken relationship with my body. So I was involved in sports, didn't matter what kind of sport it was. If there was a ball, football, baseball, uh, baseball's tough, <laughs> soccer ball, basketball, golf ball. I've had this happen with a golf ball before. Um, <laughs> uh, no matter what, I would always end up getting the ball, like hitting me smack in the face. And um, I tell you what, there's something about that that makes you want to um, for one thing, not like sports, <laughs> for obvious reasons, because it hurts. And um, also, it really, I, it alienated me from my body. I started breaking the connection from my body, and I had a lot of other reasons for that as well. It's a really common occurrence for us to disconnect from our body. Uh, there, I think Han, Hans Christian Andersen has a quote that's something like, um, he mostly resided a few feet away from his body. <laughs> And I think that's true for a lot of people. <laughs> so what I did was really badass for me. It's so far outside of my comfort zone. Um, and I've worked up to this. It didn't happen overnight. I've been getting my confidence and um, preparing for this in a lot of different ways. I knew 2018 would be the year that I would get my permit to hike it. It's very difficult to come by permits. And um, it happened and I was not ready at all. Like I had, hadn't even started training because I tweaked my knee on New Year's Day when I was skiing, I fell. And then February rolled around when you apply for permits and the only permit was like three weeks away. And I was like, oh crap. And all the people I would planned on hiking it with backed out for you know, good reason. They're like, yeah, I can't hike it in three weeks from now. <laughs> Not in good enough shape or can't get time off work or whatever. And um, it makes sense, right? So I thought, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm just going to do it. And I did. And it was that spontaneous, uh, just a few weeks of planning. And I'm so freaking proud of myself. And it was easy. It was not hard like I thought it was going to be. And the connection with my body was phenomenal. Like I, got, I did, I wanted to really ground into the sensation of what it feels like to walk for 10 miles. I haven't done that before. I've done half marathons before, but those are only, um, you know, you're not carrying everything and you're not, like you take a shower afterwards <laughs> and you sleep in a warm bed, <laughs> you know? It's a different situation. Like you're not subject to the elements. And so I'm really proud of myself. And, you know, I want to share, I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm not here sitting here trying to brag or market to you or sell you something or get you to be more like me or, and I certainly don't want you comparing yourself to me. Absolutely. I do not want that. Like your life is yours. 
and what's right for you is your choice. <laughs> you know, my life is not right for anybody else. In the couple of years I've been traveling or semi-nomadic, I, um, I've learned I, there's not another person who's doing it the way I am. And <laughs> little wave early. Yeah, you want to come up? Come on, dear. Little Waverly wanted a lap to sit on. She's my little friend here. She's very sweet. Oh, and she did not like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just am sharing this with you because I want you to feel like you can do whatever it is that matters to you. <laughs> so when I came home from the Grand Canyon, I posted my pictures <laughs> on Facebook. And the, a really funny thing happened. A bunch of guys unfriended me. And I don't really feel like my post was particularly bragging or obnoxious or, I mean, yeah, it was about me for sure. I mean, I was just like saying, hey, look at what I did. I checked all this stuff off my bucket list. Here's a few pictures and more to come. And I've got a link to it near this video. I received a ton of support from women and I did receive some beautiful, loving support from men. And I got a bunch of younger men unfriend me. And these are men who also live, uh, have traveled a lot. After having a lot of conversations with both men and women, kind of the feedback I'm getting from people is that men don't have a lot of tolerance for women who aren't playing small anymore. And they've given up on having conversations about it because it just turns into arguments nowadays. I get that. Um, but they're just turning their back. They're just shutting the door. They're clicking unfriend, not unfollow, not scrolling past. They're, they're terminating. And, and that's their right. They have that choice, that free will to do so. And I'm grateful that they did unfriend me because I'm not going to start playing small. <laughs> not going to happen. Um, I don't want you to either. Ladies, this is for you. Women, this is for you. This is from my heart to yours. I have played small my entire life. I have listened to the negativity, all of the people telling me I can't. I shouldn't, that's wrong, that's bad, be, be nice, be polite, be friendly, smile, honey. Um, I've listened to all of that. I ain't having it. I don't want you to have it either. Like, this is over. Like, for thousands of years, women haven't been able to do anything about the way we're treated. But you know what? Times have changed. Now we can. And getting the chills. Like I've spent a lot of time thinking about the women who came before me and thinking how I can live up to the opportunities that are, that are presenting themselves to me um, in my life in these times. It's a miracle the things that I've been able to do in my life. It's a miracle that the only thing that I have to deal with is the emotional consequences of my choices. I deal with haters. I, I deal with um, people telling me that I'm unemployed, that I'm a trust fund baby, that I'm uh, selfish, that I'm uh, doing it wrong. That's my favorite um, because usually they're sitting in a cubicle and I'm out playing in the woods and they're telling me I'm doing life wrong. <laughs> Like, we all get to make our choices. This is my choice. Nobody gets to make it for me. Just like nobody gets to make it for you. You get to choose what life you want to be living. And I hope that you choose wisely. But you know what? The beauty is that we're born in these times. I'm so 
grateful to be born now. Because here's the thing, women have been, been being oppressed, have been property, have been abused and violated and killed for being themselves for thousands of years. Look, this isn't news. I'm not telling you anything new here. What I am saying is do you. Like, forget, forget what the haters say. And if you need help forgetting and getting past what the haters are saying, reach out to me. Uh, trust me, I've been through it and I still go through it. Um, it's not easy and it's not something you can just blow off like that, like people talk about. So if you need some real tools, I'm here, reach out. It's taken a lot of courage for me to stay the course on what's right for me, even though everybody's telling me I do it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. The travelers, they tell me I'm doing it wrong. I need to live in a van. I need to hitchhike and not have a car. I need to um, do it in hostels. I need to do the digital nomad thing. Everyone's telling me I, I can't live in a tent. It's not safe. I've probably had 200 different people tell me I need to carry a gun and a rape whistle. I ain't having it. I ain't having it. These people are making assumptions about me. They don't know me. <laughs> My favorite response to you need to be carrying a gun is you don't know what kind of arsenal I've got sitting in that little convertible now, do you? The tires aren't the only thing custom on that baby. Now, I'm not telling anybody what my safety route is, even though it's the number one most common question I'm asked. You don't have a right to know that. And I don't mean you in particular. I mean, in, well, maybe you in particular too. <laughs> like nobody has a right to know that. That's for me. My life, it's for me. And if I can inspire a few people on the way, if I can encourage you to do the things that you've never had the courage to do, if I can help you find the strength or the capacity or the words to say no to someone who's being a jerk, I wanna do that. I've had to fight my, my way for everything I've got. Uh, I've had to, I've, I've come into this path kicking and screaming. This has not been easy for me, and I absolutely have not done it alone. Everyone seems to think that I've done this all by myself, and so therefore they can do it all by themselves. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe they can, you know? I, I wouldn't want to, quite honestly. Um, that's making it even harder on yourself. Yeah, I just really want to encourage you. Like, I'm not saying that you go out and you hike, you backpack the Grand Canyon. Like, maybe that's no big deal for you. Or maybe that's something, like, maybe you don't like dirt. <laughs> like, I, that doesn't really matter. Like, just explore some of your edges. Get out of your comfort zone. Because, like, the state of the world, <laughs> the way the world is today, a lot of people think the world's kind of a mess today. And, um... Like that comes from sitting in your comfort zone and not actually taking any action. Uh, I read a post on Facebook that was brilliant, so brilliant. It was something like the, the fastest way to kill your dreams is to spend 90% of your time researching and 10% of your time living bravely towards it. That was Sherry Guys. Let that sink in for a moment. 90% of your time researching, 10% of your time taking brave action. That's backwards. <laughs> That's how the world functions. A lot of people's lives function like that now. I'm not doing it that way anymore. I don't care who unfriends me. <laughs> I'm not going to go back. I can't. I can't fit into that box anymore. And that box stank. It's gross. There's, there's real beauty out here. It's not easy. Um, there's a lot of challenges and a lot of things that I have to think about that other people don't. My self-awareness, my intuition <laughs> is my superpower. And um, that was not true when I started this. <laughs> you know, I have faith, I have trust, and I believe in myself above everything else. 
I'm taking a lot less shit than I ever have. And I tell you what, that is the first step in, in being true to yourself. To thine own self be true. Mm. If you're actually being true to yourself, you can never go wrong. Ever. A lot of people lie to themselves. I do that. I'm still guilty of it. Um, I know when I'm lying to myself. I often can't admit it in the moment, but the next day feels like a hangover, like an integrity hangover, where I think, oh God, gotta clean that up. And I have a lot of tools and um, this is how I spend my time is cleaning up um, places where I'm out of, out of alignment, out of integrity. So women, I hope you don't take it. And if you need support, which I mean, let's face it, who actually has enough support nowadays? Like we, <laughs> even friends and family, like friends and family can give amazing advice, but there's something really powerful about the perspective of someone at an arm's length distance. There's something really powerful about people who have the guts to do things differently and know how to navigate um, the obstacles, which can be your loved ones, among other things. So I'm going to, uh, there's a link around the video. I'd love it if you checked out my Grand Canyon pictures. I've got some really special things coming that happened in the Grand Canyon. <sighs> I'm still writing the high from it. <laughs> So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing this with me. Thanks for staying with me. I know um, I can be quite passionate about things. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. I've tapped down that passion too long. And I hope you release yours. Seriously, life, life gets pretty sweet when you're true to yourself. I'm Jilly Darling. Until next time, stay in abundance.